Last announcement, and this will take a minute, so uh, this will be a little longer announcement time, but I want to walk you through what we're doing and why we're doing. We got a lot of questions this week, um, obviously, about how uh, the governor's new statewide mask mandate will impact City of God Church, uh, what's our plan moving forward, and so after a lot of conversation between our elders, other church leaders, we've been talking to medical professionals here at City of God, um, our elders have unanimously decided that while the statewide mask mandate is in place, uh, we'll have the same rules and regulations for here uh, in worship at City of God on a Sunday morning. So at least over the next month, while the mandate's in place, we're asking everybody who can uh, to wear a mask the entire worship service. Now, I want to explain a little bit about that, because from the outset, let me acknowledge this. There may be some of you who can't. There's medical conditions. There's, there's things going on, and here's what we don't want. Um, we don't want someone to feel unwelcome to come and worship with us. So if that's you, talk to us, let us know, give us a heads up. There's going to be no issue there. And so uh, we're asking those who are able over the course of the next month, especially as we have students coming back in a couple weeks, um, to wear a mask during the worship service. So uh, just as we walked through this, we believe this is an opportunity for us as a church, one, to be subject to the governing authorities, Romans 13 and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Um, it's also a good chance, we think, to be a witness to our city as they ask the question, are they more concerned about themselves or are they more concerned about the greater good of Lafayette? And I know personally I've talked to people who would love to come and worship with us, but they're concerned about health risks, they're concerned about gathering, um, depending on what the regulations are, and so we want to be sensitive to that too. Plus, Lafayette Christian School is about to open. They're going to have kids in the building this week. And we want to honor and love Lafayette Christian as we seek to do this well. So let me just say this. I know it's not a decision that will make everyone happy. I don't personally love wearing a mask. My beard is sweaty from just this morning greeting people. I understand it's convenient. So let me just address a couple concerns as we walk through this. The first one being um, some of you know the governor exempted churches, which made my life so much easier. And I'm so thankful for that. Um, and as we walked through what to do with that, um, a couple of things. That exemption was put in place, assuming churches were following, uh, following strict social distancing. I don't know if you've been here many Sunday mornings. Um, we've been doing all right at it, but we feel like this will be an extra layer to help protect people as they come in. Um, and second, again, there's a concern that congregational singing does provide an increased opportunity to spread it. I don't want to stop singing. I love our worship. I love our worship team. And so this is a way we continue to do what God has called us to do and be a little bit safer as we do it. Um, second, I know for some, uh, rules like this feel like government overreach, loss of personal freedom. I understand that. I sympathize with that. As you look at the trajectory our country is on, here's what our elders know. It would not surprise me if there is a day sooner rather than later. We'll have to make a decision. Are we going to obey God or are we going to obey men? Uh, one of the promises I want to give you is this. When we have to make that decision, the city of God elders are going to side with God. That's the, that is the decision that we'll make, that God is our primary authority, and those situations are coming, and we will faithfully lead in the midst of those, but we didn't feel as if this fell into that category yet. So with this in mind, we want to let you know about an additional worship option we're trying to make available, um, because for some, it just might not be able to gather in here with the gym uh, with us. They're unable, they're uncomfortable. Starting next week, Lord willing, it's a technology issue, and technology in this building has taken 20 years off of my life this summer. And so, fingers crossed, I'm hesitantly promising you this will work, but we're going to have a tailgate option church available. And what that is, is if you want to pull up to the building in the back lot and sit in your car or bring lawn chairs in a masks optional setting, in theory, you will be able to turn to a certain dial on a radio and hear the service and worship and hear the sermon and sit out there with other people from City of God and grab communion and take it out so you can enjoy that in a different setting. Uh, maybe you don't bring everything you'd bring to a tailgate. That should be pretty self-explanatory. But if you brought a grill, I'll be out there with you. So that may have, there may be two people left in here, and everybody's having a party next week, and that's great. Um, but that'll be an option. You'll also be able to tune in uh, via Facebook. I know the video is not great today. We're working on all that. And so um, I'll finally, I'll close with this. If you have a concern or question about this, um, talk to us, talk to our elders, send me an email, send me a message. We're not trying to put cumbersome rules on people. And I know this isn't convenient for everyone, but we believe it's the best way to safely continue to worship as a church, especially within three weeks. We might have 600 people show up. 
And the end of August is going to be a big learning curve for a lot of us with this. Um, I've heard, you know, as I've talked to other pastors and churches, I've heard from a couple of pastors this week who had outbreaks happen in their church. And we finally made the decision. I can live with a handful of emails or messages, but if there was an outbreak here and something serious happened, uh, I couldn't sleep with that. And so we feel like, again, this is the best decision for us. So here's what we're asking from you over the next month. One, um, give everybody the benefit of the doubt here. And what I mean by that is this. Uh, you might show up next week and someone has a legitimate good reason they're not wearing a mask. Don't assume that they just don't want to follow the rules. Assume the best. You're going to encounter people in this church who want stricter guidelines than you're comfortable with. Assume the best of them. That as we think about this, underneath everyone's concerns on issues like this, whatever side you're on, there's fear of some kind. And Scripture reminds us that perfect love casts out fear. And as we step into love, loving one another and loving Jesus, we can walk through a month of this together. Secondly, in the coming weeks and months, uh, continue to worship with us however you're comfortable. Again, in here, live on Facebook, tune in outside with other believers. And if there's a way that we can help you feel more connected in the short term, please let us know. We're trying to have Zoom options for any other ministry thing that's going on over the next few months. We're trying to provide ways for people to be plugged in at whatever comfort level they have. Um, and like I said, once students show up, there's going to be a big learning curve for what this is going to look like here. Third, um, pray for unity right now. This seems, I know this seems like a small thing, but as I talk to other churches and pastors who are walking through this, they have seen division sown in their church over something that seems uh, a pretty simple issue. And so I would say this, as long as our focus is on face masks and guidelines and rules and regulations, it's not on glorifying God and reaching people with the gospel. The devil would love nothing more for than for this to become a divisive issue here at City of God because it takes our focus off of what God is calling us to do in this city. And so pray for unity. Pray for your own heart. If I could just ask this, pray for your leaders. 2020 has been a weird year to be a pastor. It feels like we've lived five years in the last six months. And our pastors are trying to lead well. We're having constant conversations with people. Uh, most of what we're dealing with this year was not covered in seminary, and so we're kind of figuring this out as we go, okay? Please be in prayer for us, um, and know that there's hundreds of opinions in this church on how to handle this well, and we want to navigate that in a God-glorifying way that helps us reach this city with the gospel. And then finally this, keep conversation open with us. Uh, nothing causes bitterness or frustration to grow, like stewing on something and not having the conversation. Even if you think it's a small thing, have the conversation. Keep the lines of communication open. Uh, I'll, I'll close, and then Tim's going to come. This is a weird time in the life of our church, and people are hurting, and they're scared, they're lonely, they're confused, maybe even a little bit frustrated. Um, I put this online this week, and I think it's helpful as Tim gets ready to come. Uh, and that is this. I do think the church has an incredible opportunity in our culture right now. That as most people are thinking about what's best for me right now, that the church can look out and say, how can we serve others? How can we love others? And here's the thing. If you live that kind of life, one, it's going to be uniquely attractive to people, but two, you're going to get questions about it. And the heart of the gospel that we believe is this. Jesus laid down his own rights for our good. And Jesus laid down his privileges for our good. And when people see us doing the same thing and ask questions about that, we're going to have a natural opportunity to tell them about the Savior who did the same thing for us. We can see this as a problem, or we can see this as a gospel opportunity. I think it's a gospel opportunity. I'm going to pray, and then we can put this behind us. Pastor Tim is going to come and bring the word to us. I can't wait to hear what God has laid on his heart. So let me pray for Tim and our time together, and we'll move on. Father, thank you for this morning. God, I pray for a spirit of unity in this church. Um, it is a confusing world we live in right now. Uh, it is a fragmented world that we live in right now. And one of the beautiful truths of the gospel is this, that you have promised that your church will be a picture to the world around us um, of a unity that doesn't make sense, of natural enemies who have become friends, of people who should want nothing to do with one another, loving each other and caring about each other deeply. Father, help us be that light on a hill. Help us be um, 
that picture of your love for us to Lafayette, to West Lafayette, to Purdue's campus. God, the good things you've done over the course of the past decade here, continue to do those things and help us look forward to the ways you're going to continue to work and move at City of God in the coming months. We love you. We trust you. We're thankful for all that you've done for us. Be with Pastor Tim now as he brings the word. We ask this all in your son's name. Amen.